We are back. A dramatic week deserves a dramatic entrance. And I would never disappoint. Uh, the drama of this week between the elections. So actually, something you might not know is I'm actually filming this on Thursday. So I almost always film on Wednesday, but I saved to Thursday because I was very wishful in thinking we might know the election results by now. <laughs> I know, I wanted to be topical and have things to talk about. COVID and going back in a second lockdown. Like I actually feel like this week has been nuts. There's a lot to talk about guys. The drama of it all. I just feel like I'm emotionally tapped. Like, I feel like I've seen it all. I just cannot. But hey, whatever, the world keeps spinning. Instagram keeps blowing up and impact keeps happening. So welcome back to another week of impact awesomeness. Sweet, sweet impact goodness. Yeehaw. I feel like last week, all I had to talk about was like Subway being on Deliveroo. <laughs> But this week, this week has been drama! Okay, so it's our final sermon, told by me, as we tell you guys all about a sermon that Jesus told, and it's called The Greatest Sermon Ever Told. And you know, it's so funny that like everything seems to always fall apart at the exact same time. <laughs> because I feel like what we're talking about today actually really applies to the cultural moment we're finding ourselves in. Uh, I feel like the world we're living in right now is just nuts. Like, I'm not a cultural commentator or anything like that. Uh, just someone who lives in our world and observes things. But I feel like things are just nuts right now. I feel like we're living in a time and in a moment that we'll be like reading about in history books one day. Your grandkids will be like, Grandma, tell me all about COVID and lockdown. And I'll be like, it wasn't actually really all that different from my normal life because I have no friends. And then I'll just try to hide these YouTube videos. I'll never tell them about these so they can never find them. Unless I'm like, guys, remember when I used to be young and hot? Of course you don't, you're my grandkids. Let me show you videos. <laughs> But yeah, I feel like the time we're living in is actually like history in the making between Trump and Boris. Does anyone else think it's so weird how similar they look? Like honestly, they look like brothers to me. They have wacky hair. They're like similar body shapes and stuff. I don't know, I think it's very strange that the UK and the US has like the same leader at the same time. <laughs> Honestly, like brothers, from like build the wall to locking up illegal immigrants in appalling detention centers, from outright lying to people all the time on mainstream media. Oh yeah, and he called and Donald Trump. He called mainstream media the enemy of the people. You know who does that? Dictators. <laughs> he went on Air Force One with toilet paper on his shoes. <laughs> Oh, poetic justice. Fake news. Oh, oh, it's fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Like we, we can't even figure out what's real and what's fake anymore. Then there's coronavirus. So like being on lockdown, not allowed to leave our homes, not allowed to travel, not allowed to physically go to work for many of us. Even just like the misinformation on coronavirus. And that's not just from Donald Trump. I don't feel like our prime minister has been truthful all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know if you guys remember in the summer, which feels like three years ago, the hydroxychloroquine thing. Do you remember? Donald Trump told people to inject themselves with disinfectant for the treatment of COVID. <laughs> uh -huh. Like what's real? What's fake? Who's reliable? Who's not? Even like the racial injustice, the marches, the statue that was torn down here where we live in Bristol this year. 2020 has been wild. I don't know if I want 2021 to come or if I don't. Is it gonna be worse? If it's gonna be worse, I don't want it. And I know for me, there's like so many times where I'm feeling really overwhelmed and like what's going on here? And it's really easy, easy for us to feel like the world is falling apart. I don't know, I can't tell if I'm just like in a bad place or what, I don't know. I know I'm just feeling a little bit down right now. But the world we live in 
to me just feels really dark. Every time I turn on the TV, everything, every time I log onto my socials, I feel like there's just so much unrest right now. Do y'all like feel like this at all? Actually, shut me up. Y'all take the floor. Let's hit you up with question one. How are you feeling right now? How do you feel like about the world, about COVID, uh, just about where we're at right now? How are you feeling? Give this video a pause and discuss with whoever you're watching with. I don't know, I just feel like I'm not in control of my own life right now and I feel like I'm just caught in this riptide and I can't swim against it. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> oh my gosh, I could complain all day guys. And let's get into Jesus' sermon. Shut me up! His words, his teachings are far better than mine. So let's open up our Bibles today. The Word of God. Today we're looking at Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16. See how quickly I got there? Redland, you're not wasting your money on this youth minister. Woo. <laughs> and you guys already know how I do, how I do, what I do. I put uh, the verse on the screen if you don't have your Bible or if you forgot it or you just don't have time to run and go grab it. But I really suggest like during these videos, you have your Bibles open and like read it together with me. I could be lying to you. Like, this could not be verses at all. Go grab your own Bibles and double check what I'm reading and read it for yourselves. So Matthew 5, 13 to 16, and it says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. All right, the word of God, you'll have your moment. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So Jesus starts today's sermon with some really strange sayings. You are the salt of the earth. Oh, I'm Jesus, by the way. See my long hair? I'm, it's white as snow, I'm revelation Jesus. You are the salt of the earth. Jesus, what that mean? But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Mate, I don't know. Does salt lose its saltiness? Does, does it lose its saltiness? Saltiness salt is good for nothing. What is it good for except to be trampled underfoot? Am I right, guys? Yeah, you're probably right, I guess. I don't know, you probably should. I've never heard of salt losing its saltiness, Jesus. Okay, why would Jesus say that? That's just weird. <laughs> you're the light of the world. That's a topic change. Weren't we just talking about salt? Okay, so let's break this down. What does he mean? Why is he calling us salt? <laughs> is it because I add flavor to everything? If it was a flavor though, I feel like I would be something really spicy. I'd be like chili flakes. No, that's not what he means about us being salt. So like in the time of Jesus, people didn't have fridges or freezers or electricity or TikTok. But yeah, they didn't have fridges. He lived in the desert. Think about all the things that are in your fridge or freezer right now. Do your parents do a weekly shop? The stuff only probably stays good because of your fridge. <laughs> yeah, like in Jesus' time, they couldn't like go buy some chicken breast, stick it in their fridge for later. So salt was used to preserve meat. When salt is rubbed into meat, it slows decay. And like people did this for a long time. Like basically until fridges were invented, this is what people were doing. So salt preserves things from rotting. So when Jesus tells us, you are the salt of the world, he's saying, you preserve the goodness in this world. You are entrusted to care for our world, our people, our loved ones, our enemies. We cling to what is right. We preserve what is good. No pressure. <laughs> You preserve what is good, you preserve me, you preserve my teachings, you preserve what is good, and you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill. Let your light shine before others. Now guys, on a serious note, I actually don't know about our world right now, guys. 
I know it's not the end of the world. I know the sun is still gonna come up the next day uh, and the world's gonna keep spinning. But the spirit in our world right now can feel a little bit hopeless. It feels so divided, it feels so divisive. I just, I, I don't know. <laughs> And as I read these words of Jesus, and, he, and he's saying, we're the preservers of the good. We are the light in the darkness. We are the light that shines brighter in the darkness. I'm not sure if we can speak for our modern church when we say these things. I'm, I'm not sure those words describe what a lot of Christians are in the world right now. I'm, I'm not sure that's actually the case. If anything, on my socials, Christians are often the ones bringing the divisiveness being the antagonists. They certainly aren't being the ones who are bringing the light. If I'm reading the words of Jesus correctly, it really feels like we have failed our jobs in bringing hope to a hopeless world. As I look around, it doesn't feel like we're the light in the darkness or, or joy where there's grief. Help to the helpless. Like if Redland Parish Church just dropped off the map tomorrow. If impact just dropped off the face of the earth. Would anyone notice? Would anyone care? And I don't, I don't mean if the pretty little chapel. To be honest, people would probably notice more if our chapel disappeared than if we, the church, disappeared. I'm, I'm wondering if, if we look at these words, if, if we're the salt that's lost its saltiness, if we've become no good for anything. I wonder if we've become more like social clubs that just play sardines and maybe chat theology. Which is all good! There's nothing wrong with these things! But if that's all we're here for, we have fundamentally misunderstood everything Jesus has called us to. The Sermon on the Mount for me is one of the most challenging portions of scripture. It's known as Jesus's like real big ethics talk. Uh, and that's usually what people get out of it. Like, don't commit adultery. <laughs> Don't divorce people. Don't brag when you're fasting. Oh yeah, and the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> but actually the biggest topic in this sermon is the kingdom of God and what it should be like in the kingdom of heaven. And, and what it looks like and what it ought to look like when we, the followers of Jesus, actually choose to follow his will over ours, his kingdom over ours, and when we truly surrender all. A glimpse into what our world and, and what our purpose and what our calling actually truly could be. The Sermon on the Mount always reminds me on how much more work the Holy Spirit needs to do within me and my, and my own life. As we look around our world, I think the words of Jesus should be seen as a criticism of us and especially of people like me and how much we have failed our callings to be people who bring light and hope and joy in a world that doesn't have these things. The hollow and deceptive ideologies of our world can never bring the same hope, joy, life, peace that living in Christ brings. Jesus says you, my disciples, my people, you are the salt of the world. You, my disciples, my apprentices, you are the light of the world. And if we can't see salt or light anywhere we look, or if the light seems so dim, something's wrong here, church. Something's deeply, deeply wrong. And when I read passages like this, I can't help but feel easily overwhelmed. Like, Lord, what can we do then? Like, how do we fix this? And here's the fantastic answer. It's not completely ours to fix. We, we aren't a light on the hill. We aren't the salt of the earth by our own merit or because we're freaking awesome and we're amazing. We are the salt and we are the light because the Holy Spirit is in us. The spirit who works within us is greater than myself. There's nothing I can say, there's nothing I can do, there's nothing inherently like really special and awesome about me besides the spirit of God that is working in and through me. And a couple cups of coffee. Just kidding, just the Holy Spirit. So let's let him like work in us, impact. Let's actually like surrender more to him. Let's start giving up our kingdom and the kingdom of me and let the kingdom of God take root in our hearts and in our lives and in our cities, our schools and our family. I mean, like what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> 
I feel like for so long I've tried to do things my way, to live in my kingdom, and I don't know. I think for me, it's time for me to start taking this kingdom of God stuff a bit more seriously. Maybe even like radically seriously. To radically love my enemies. To radically give to the needy. To radically live in him and trust him to a point where I actually don't worry about other things because I know my father in heaven's got it covered. Where I don't store up my treasures here on earth but in heaven to radically let Jesus take root in my life and start letting go of more and more things of this world that just don't bring me true joy or true happiness or true fulfillment. You, Impact, are the salt of the world. You are the light. And don't take that lightly. Let's hit you babes and honeys up with question two. How could you be the salt and light in our world? What are some practical things we could be doing to bring light in the darkness? Give this video a pause, chat with whoever you're watching, have a, have a little think see and we'll see you in a minute. Impact, today I wanted to keep today's session just short and sweet. I know I usually just ramble on and on and give you cultural context and all that blah 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 stuff. But I feel like this is one of the teachings of Jesus that's actually quite simple. No need to overcomplicate it with fancy stuff or Greek words. The message here, <laughs> simple. Now what do we do next? And I'm not gonna end today's session like I usually do. Because well, church isn't ending. <laughs> church isn't over. This is only the beginning. Church isn't over, church continues when you turn off your computer and when you go to school, when you're with your friends, with your, when you're with your parents, when you're on your socials. This is the beginning of church. Turn off your computer and go have your church service everywhere you go. You are the salt and the light. See you next week, Impact. <laughs>